Ah, uh, you want to do the edit? Hello, Scott. <laughs> My light is off. <laughs> Everything is yeah. dark. Surprise, surprise. So if we go on a journey tonight, we may not do a radio show. We might. Because we spent about two hours looking at very advanced rife-related machines that get rid of pathogens and bacteria and viruses and disease. And we were exploring a guy in New Zealand that invented one. I think it's sold through China, but it's um, uh, very uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. And probably I may acquire one. For general health, longevity, it's like anything though, if you get a machine that'll cure you of a, of a deadly disease, uh, Lyme's disease or any of these other things, complicated number of pathogens involved in these have to be killed and then they have to be eliminated from the body safely. So the function of these devices is to do both. Uh, based on Royal Raymond Rife's original frequencies, um, my work is not about curing disease on the planet. I didn't come to earth to heal people. There are enough people, if you do research in your conscious to explore and find ways to do that for yourself. When you get something like a rife equipment, anything like that, you have to apply it to yourself. A doc, you, if you go to a medical doctor, they won't even use them. Mm -hmm. I can't legally even use them. So they're not going to cure anything. So if you want to get some way to cure yourself or change, a couple of things have to happen. Diet has to change. Can't eat dead animals and preserved animals and growth hormone in pigs and chickens and sheep and cows and, and crustaceans from the bottom of the ocean that eat all the doo-doo of the fish and expect to recover and be well because you won't. And I mean, changing diet away from things that create the health problems in the first place, not to mention radioactive particles that are all over the atmosphere and in the deep well waters, even the Himalayas from nuclear bomb testing that was done above ground before they banned them. We all have to deal with all these issues. So diet and eating high nutritive live enzyme foods and things is very critical to the healing process, both for cleaning and for the proper nutrient value. So you can't just use a machine and cure cancer and keep smoking cigarettes or keep doing what you're doing or keep eating the way you're eating because you'll just get it again somewhere else in the body. So there is some learning curve to all this. You can get a rife-based device that'll cure these things, even COVID, but you have to do it to yourself. You can't use those to heal other people. You can show them how to use it and they can heal themselves. But unless you want to get in trouble with the American Medical Association or associations of pharmaceuticals around the world and governments. You can't really get one of these and start claiming you can heal things because you'll get in trouble doing it. So, but you have a right to do what you want on yourself. And really that's personal responsibility, isn't it, Perry? We have to be responsible for the conditions we find ourselves in in life trying to get cured from a doctor, physician. You know, if you're in an accident and you're bleeding to death, they can save your life and fix bones and things like that. But to my knowledge, in the United States and probably the rest of the world, direct cures for deadly diseases like cancer and, and lymphoma and Lyme's disease and all these things people have problems with are not openly made available through regular doctors and pharmaceutical companies because they'd be out of business if they were. Simple fact. So you can apply things that really work to yourself and you can show other people how to use if something you have a device, you can show someone else how to use it for themselves, but it can't be something you make a lot of money on or you know, sell to other people or charge for it because then you're practicing medicine without a license and you're vulnerable. So that's the way we work this, personal responsibility. I'm the same way as someone living on this planet as everybody else. I still have to look out for this physical form. If it dropped tonight, I'd be set free from this burden. 
I'd be doing my work in higher forms and helping this world transform even if I didn't have a body here. But while this body is here, until it can be changed or transformed, it isn't about making the body survive forever or about living in a uh, immortalized physical form. That's all wrong. You could be healed of any disease and get run over by a herd of camels without expecting it on a trip to Africa. You could be cured of blindness and then get run over in your head squashed by a meteor that hits you on the head in the field or in a plane crash or anything else. So those types of healing can happen, but it's not the reason we exist on the planet. It's not the purpose for living. The purpose for living really is to discover, which takes courage, who and what we are that has never been a physical body? Who and what we are that runs physical brains and bodies, but is not one? That's really why we're here. If you can discover or awaken what you are and what it looks like and how it works, that is not a brain or body, a genetic DNA template, it's made of molecules and atoms and electrons like everything else around you on earth, then to change this, the spherical, what people call soul, the spherical being we are, has the capabilities to change this. The brain you grew up with and this body does not have the ability to change anything. It runs on automatic. It's, it's got certain programs set in the genetic structure of the genomes on the DNA to die at a certain age or be prone to cancer or live to a ripe old age and shrivel up like a plume prune at 105 and then die in your sleep. That's not living. That's body chemistry and that's alterable by the misuse of science. If you know the frequencies to turn off and on genomes over a billion on the human twin strand DNA, you can control people. You can close down certain functions so that the atma or the spherical being we are, what it's structured like, has blocks in trying to implement its higher faculties through this brain. It's passed on genetically. It's a tough thing to work with and how to solve it. When your society of people on a planet and on the internet is so confusing deliberately, made to be so confusing with hidden truth and misdirection and dishonesty and honesty and all that stuff. When people explore things, they often just get mind boggled and walk away confused. So they remain in doubt and fear. It's better to detach yourself from any negative thing you can ever see on the internet or from anybody that's negative. And just be kind, but just don't associate with them. That's a real challenge for people on earth to become aware enough to disconnect themselves from any negative emotion or imagination that everybody else is busy putting out on the world 24 seven, bouncing off the ionosphere, thick in the atmosphere all over the planet. And if you grow up in a body with a brain on this planet, you're gonna grow up as an adult in doubt and fear because you have no answers. Person doesn't even know why they're on this earth or who sent them here well, God sent them, some vague thing they don't even know. It's, it's somewhere else in some heaven. And so they remain in ignorance, and all they've got is faith. Something they believe in that someone tells them is the truth, but they don't know because they aren't experienced in it. The people teaching them that aren't experienced in it, normally. And I'm not putting down any of these people. They're just people on earth that grew up here with no awareness of why they're here or where they came from before they were born here because that's been suppressed. And most of the time that's suppressed before they're even born here. So there's the hidden history of each individual they're afraid to look at. There's fear, subconscious fear, about looking at who and what they are that isn't the physical body. Most people are scared to death of that. People talk about soul and throw it around like it's a bag of potato chips. It's something I have somewhere that I can't see. And they think this brain and body is what possesses that something else that's separate from them. And that's all wrong. Because it keeps them 
grounded to the earth as if they were a physical body, knowing it's going to grow old in a few trips around the sun, and then they're going to die. They amass all this wealth and money and power, and then it's taken from them. They have to leave this life, and the body goes to dust, or is cremated, or buried. That doesn't, the person, the being doesn't die, but they are living in an illusion that they are a physical body that can. And that's the problem with the people of planet Earth. All of them, almost all of them. On other world systems, there are human cultures far more advanced than Earth that do not have these problems. And if governments on this planet ever get off their silly childish power trips, they would be able to accept that help from other worlds and there would be full disclosure here. It wouldn't be destructive. There wouldn't be anybody shot or killed. They just stop abusing things because they're so terrified. Governments and people lie and, and abuse and cheat and weasel things to the populace because they're afraid. There's no other reason for it. They're either afraid of another power overseas, which the other power overseas is afraid of us, or they're afraid of extraterrestrials? Are the good ones really good? Are they really bad? Are the bad ones really bad who promise us technology and then stab us in the back later? These are the problems people have on earth. And there's not easy problems to solve for people on earth because they don't have all their reasoning faculties turned on. How can a person that has a 100% developed brain on earth like everyone, unless it's damaged or been injured or something, only use six to 10% of entire functional full immature brain. That makes it insane to even talk like that, yet that's what's taught in medical schools and psychiatry that people use six to 10% of their brain. The people who say it haven't got a clue why that is. There's no reason why they shouldn't use 100% other than the fact that certain genomes on the DNA have been switched off. So the being running the body and brain can't get to them, can't access them. Those are other areas of the brain, except under very unique conditions, sudden near-death experiences, shock, sometimes can shake open some of these higher faculties or unblock a fear. A fear of getting out of the body is the primary fear that keeps people grounded to this earth and stupid because they think they're gonna get caught by demons or something else. And what I try to describe for people is the fact they've already been caught they're on earth. I don't care what religion they're in or what government position they're in, what's classified or what isn't. They're on earth with little to no memory of who or what they were before they were born here. Number one, that's the first thing that's wrong. They're afraid to leave the body because they have no training about it or confidence in it or a comfort with it. Growing up, schools, parents, governments don't teach this. Not even religions teach this. Very few gurus on the entire planet really know how to teach this to others, if they know it well themselves. And often then they won't teach it to masses of people because it's too dangerous to do so. So they'll teach people secretively, privately, so that governments in fear won't suppress them. This is a sad state of affairs for the planet of Earth as it is right now. But Earth does not have to remain in this terrible dilemma. All they need to do is get over their basic fear of accepting kind, wondrous help from people out among the stars that are willing to provide it and have offered to provide it already several times and been turned down by leaders on this planet because of their fear. Some of it's justified. If you've got a tyrant ET race out there, there are very few, but there are a few, there are space travelers come here and offer you technology and they don't care if we give up our nuclear weapons that would kill us all. You make a deal with those guys, you're, you're just like putting a hand grenade in your own back pocket and pulling the pen out because it's going to backfire on you. Nobody in their right consciousness would offer nuclear radioactive technology to Earth's people who have not earned it on their own and don't deserve to work with it because they're not mature enough to handle it. No one would offer that to people on Earth and, and not care if we give up radioactive and nuclear bombs and that kind of thing. The benevolent races would never give us more advanced technology the way we are. 
In fact, they've quarantined the entire solar system we live in. So whatever governments are telling people right now, something else is underway out in the universe, out among the stars, that's going to move through this solar system and change that. Now, leaders who are in fear about disclosing are simply going to have to get off that fear one day. Have a little courage, show a little backbone, decide together to finally release that to the public because it will set them free and their families as well. These beings out there are not going to come and kill people that have lied to people since World War II, lied about everything, dealing with extraterrestrial life. They did that out of fear. This is understood. But once they realize that they don't have to be afraid in order to disclose, that there's certain protection that comes with that territory. And that means keeping the bad ETs out of here, which is already done. Then they can step forward and start to move in this direction. It might be difficult. They might be biting their fingernails at first, but they're going to do it and they're going to be okay. My work is about providing a doorway into this planet with this type of awareness and information that isn't provided anywhere else. I do it because it's not being done by anybody else. And I'm aware enough to provide that as a emissary or a representative, a kind being from other worlds. And I'm not talking about any tyrant ETs. They've been dealt with. So we have a quarantined solar system, which just simply means until we get our act together on this planet and work together as one people under a kind government that tells the truth, we're not going to be allowed to play among the stars with those more advanced races and they will prevent us from doing it because we're dangerous and cannot be trusted, period. They think they're going to go out there and have this militarization of space between Russia and China, the U.S., and fight over spoils of the moon. And they're going to run into some serious, very serious surprises because they're not going to be allowed to do it that way. Space is already occupied by more advanced races. They don't tolerate that. So... They can play with their rockets and try to launch them to Mars and whatever, but there's no future in space travel with what they're doing right now. There just isn't one, practically. No Star Trek with warp-driven radioactive warp cores in the future 2,000 years from now with tailpipes polluting space. That's nonsense. You can't get around faster than the speed of light in a rocket ship. It's impossible. They can't go fast enough, and it's the wrong technology. If we think we're going to go out and pollute the rest of the universe with radioactive equipment, think again, it's not going to happen. Not ever. We're a planet of misguided human beings here, manipulated and altered genetically long ago in galactic history, put here with no memory, and asked to get things right. Governments to make right decisions when they're in fear themselves all the time, fear of losing their power. Who's going to be the next president? Who's going to be the next guy in Russia? And they're fighting over this stuff all the time, trying to maintain the status quo that cannot be maintained and move into the future successfully. I would say it's probably true to state, and it is true to state, that other planets in our galaxy, just in this parallel dimension of the galaxy, that reached a critical stage of self-destruction through ignorance and unconsciousness, and people can't remember anything, who they were, what they are that isn't a body, that's dangerous because they will make nothing but mistakes. When any decision is made on this planet from fear, it's the wrong decision. It can't be anything but incorrect because it's negative. Negative nature produces exact opposite returnable results. Through a primary law of physics, everything you think about and imagine and feel goes out in the universe and comes back. It's a basic law of physics 101. Scientists know it, but they haven't got a clue that it applies to them personally as beings. How we feel and imagine and think about things. Thoughts are measurable on an oscilloscope. They go out from the body through the electromagnetic field and they affect the universe of molecules around us. So it's very important that people on Earth become aware of how to use their imagination properly. 
because they're not now. They don't even know what it is. They think it's fantasy made up in their brain. But the brain imagines things. It doesn't. The brain is a device that is not designed to imagine anything. So they can play around with brains for the next million years trying to find where imagination comes from and they won't find it there. The brain is not designed to do that. That's not its purpose. The being running the brain and body, which is non-nuclear energy, it is energy, but it cannot be destroyed through anything physical like nuclear bombs or radiation or the power of the sun or any of that. That which we really are running a brain and body is what people have to become aware of in order to change the way things are here. You can't change it from wishful thinking. The brain has no power to change the world around us because it is a genetic entity. It is a biological machine run by a being and motivated by a being that is not the brain or the body. Brains and bodies do not run themselves. If I weren't running this body, it'd sit there drool on myself. Nothing would happen. I wouldn't even move. So common sense seems to be a word that's used a lot, but it's not very prevalent on this planet amongst people. They have it. It's just suppressed or they're afraid to use it or they're afraid to leave their body. Every night, every single person on this planet leaves their body. And most of the time, most people aren't aware of this at all. Or they're terrified of it. There isn't any demons out there that can catch the atma, the real spherical being we are, and, and catch it like people are taught on Earth. That's wrong. They're already caught and imprisoned unconsciously in bodies on this planet. They don't need to get caught later. They've already had it happen to them. One way or another in galactic history, they're put on this planet with little or no memory. People assume that's normal, but it isn't. It's not normal at all. Every person on earth is capable of recovering what would be called their higher faculties. They're not gonna do that in the brain. The brain and body and every person alive on this planet that grew up was never taught any of this growing up. So how would they be comfortable knowing it as an adult? Therefore, people on Earth need to recover their ability to know things in the multiverse by direct perception. It's a telepathic function each atma or being has that runs a body. People on Earth have been made to forget that. They don't know this anymore. They think it's something that the human beings will develop in the infinite future. Telepathy, levitation, all this stuff. No, that's ancient. That was done long ago in galactic history. Human beings evolved out in the universe billions of years ago. They're very old in this form. Human beings didn't evolve on this planet. They evolved in other worlds and other galaxies and other realities long ago. They weren't developed as a genetic, this kind of level here. I've said this before, but the races on Earth represent races on entire planetary systems elsewhere. One way or another, they were brought here with their memory wiped or suppressed or in terror and put in bodies here. And they're asked to make correct decisions about life and the universe. They can't do it because they're not aware. If people on Earth became aware of the vast amount of life, very evolved human, humanoid, and other life that's out there already, this planet would change virtually overnight. No one's going to be put up against a wall and shot or any of that stuff by good ETs. No. They're not interested in running the governments of this planet. No one would want that terrible burden. They're interested in the people on this planet growing up as people, as beings, and working together for the common good of all life. And to do that, people on Earth are going to need to know what life is out there and how to respect it in order to play in it amongst the fellow beings who are out there. They would provide the means, the technology, even the ships at no monetary cost. 
if we would behave like mature beings. I can't blame the people of earth for what they've been through because I've been through it. I know what I had to go through against all odds to recover what I know. What was done to me before I was on this, put on this planet was meant to be permanent so I would never recover. I did anyway. Because what I really am as an atom, I cannot be suppressed forever by any technology or any being. If the one thing is the most important thing I can get across to people on earth is this. Number one, you are not now, nor have you ever been a physical DNA made body. That is a device you're supposed to run, being aware of what you are that is not it. Two, what the being, the Atma, as most advanced races call what people on earth call soul, has a shape to it, a structure, a depth, a spherical nature. It is made of the energy that is in space between planets and moons and suns and stars that people can't, Earth can't put a finger on. Zero point energy, toroidal energy, the energy of the universe is not physical matter. It's not protons and electrons and neutrons. It's an energy behind all that, that all that stuff floats in. To get into an advanced states of moving around the physical universe, and to be able to leave our bodies and travel into higher dimensions while you have a body alive is the way we're supposed to be living. Earth is destined to experience this, become like this. The past ancient prophesied Armageddon destruction for this Earth was permanently altered forever a few years ago Earth time by beings not of this Earth. People on Earth just, they just haven't caught up to it. They don't know this yet. Okay, so people live in fear every day about the end of the world from one way or another. A disease, government suppression, tyranny, nuclear war, alien invasion. If anybody ever stopped to think with common sense, they'd realize that as depicted as alien advanced races that are diabolical and evil are in movies, if they really had that kind of power, and there was no one out there policing them from doing it. Don't you think they would have come here and slaughtered everybody already by now? It amazes me that people spend any time focusing on Armageddon and the end of the world. They're living their life in fear all day long. And they don't realize that while they're doing that, they're co-creating the conditions of that unconsciousness with that omnipresent, huge universal force out there, because it is a co-creator with people like us. What we imagine in it, it creates. It is the power, not us. But we are meant to be co-creators with it, which means if we're gonna be co-creating with the zero point energy of creation properly, we have to respect all life out there in the multiverse. Most of them already respect us and we can't even respect ourselves on this planet. How can you respect yourself if you don't remember who you are or what you are? And you're expected to be told that by some angel when you die later? That's silly. There's no proof of that. It's better a person know who and what they are while they have a physical body they're running on earth if they can, if they can get boost themselves up with a little courage and trust themselves. I'm not even, people shouldn't even be asked to trust an unknown God somewhere way far away. Because the energy that they are that's running the body is part of that already, made of the same energy as that source, identical to it on a smaller scale, like a drop in a mighty ocean of pure light and sound. That's what people are. They have no idea that's what they are on earth. For the most part, they don't. If they did, they wouldn't be doing any of the things they're doing right now. Hmm. There's this old story, um, the hundredth monkey theory. Basically, it goes like this. Two islands off Japan, there are these two islands where monkeys live. People didn't know monkeys are in Japan, but yeah. And people would feed them crates of fruit, 
These are islands that are not connected. Monkeys can't get to each other. And for a long time, they would be eating fruit. It would, they'd drop this fruit in crates on the sand and get sand on it, and they would eat around the sand. And they weren't intelligent enough to know to wash it. And one day, a piece of fruit rolls in the ocean and cleans the sand off, and they're able to eat the whole thing. So the monkeys on one island started washing their food and being able to eat all of it. Now, the, the importance of the story is that the monkeys on the other island that had no connection started doing the same thing. That's the same with people on Earth. Once a certain kind of uplifting energy starts to change things here, which is a energy that inspires all beings to only create what is beneficial to all life with their creative imagination. That can't involve any negative emotion, fear, hate, anger, uncertainty, theory, speculation, debate, arguing, any of that stuff. In order to have higher IQ and use all the brain, you can't work with negative emotions and imagination because the two will not blend. The energy of the universe has to flow freely through the atma and through the brain and body and out into the world in order for it to work properly. This is just simple higher science really, but it's spiritual because the being isn't the physical body. It's practical. It is energy, but not as it's known by people on Earth yet. It's known out among the stars what that is and how to work with it. So they can develop craft not based on anything they're playing with on Earth and zip across interdimensional portals across great distances without rocket power. They have to work with the energy that exists out there that is not physical matter in order to traverse those vast distances or they'll never be able to do it. Never. So when I say there's no future for this planet in space travel the way it is, I'm speaking the truth. There isn't. Because more advanced races want us to, they want us to join them, but not the way we are. We just screw everything up out there, pollute everything out there, fight over the spoils of a planet that isn't ours. It can't be that way. So I'm trying to make this practical for a common understanding because I respect people on earth having the potential to remember or to awaken their higher faculties in this way. Because really, if they start hearing this stuff and start reasoning with it and, and thinking about it, it starts to stimulate an awakening process through the first primordial sound behind all creation. The zero point itself has a sound. And it's represented in the first half of the name human word. Because it was something that human beings on any worlds could send out the imagination or through vocal cords, either way, once they know, and it will connect to the zero point, the primordial energy of all creation that isn't physical matter. It's a telepathic link. It's a pure link. It cannot be perverted by science or evil beings. It's not psychic. I'm not putting down psychics. It's just not psychic. That works with the dual energies of the lower dimensions of time and space. The pure energy works with the energy that supports all that, behind all that, before all that was created. Before time and space, which is what an atma is, part of the source, prime creator. That's why we have life. That's why we can run bodies. On more advanced worlds, people are aware of what they are and can get in and out of the bodies they're running. When they have children, they know who the being is and what that being knows from its lifetimes. And then they get into a body chosen on a planet and they're conscious as they're raised. It's not like what it is on earth at all out there. And we're not going to be able to enjoy that unless we can work together as one planet for crying out loud and get all this fear and espionage and propaganda and f competing over space travel and all this nonsense that's childish childish behavior spiritually just ridiculous and i don't blame people for being that way because they're grown up like that how can you blame them I know the potential of a human being because I'm living it. 
And I share that with other people because I know that have that potential as well. So I don't promote fear of the future, an Armageddon or fear of the present or the future. I don't promote people fearing extraterrestrials or, you know, here comes the end of the world and then we'll be free kind of stuff. I don't do that because it's not helpful to anyone in any way. Promoting more fear just promotes the same trap. It doesn't work. It can't work physically, technologically, spiritually. Um, it can't work. It's contrary to the basic laws of physical matter. To put out negative energy and expect to get something positive out of it. It won't work. It can't. Okay. So I brought up this word hue. It's just a word, but it is the first half of the word human, hue woman, hue man, hue child, hue. It's a round hole sound that vibrates the pineal gland in the center of the human brain. That isn't where the being lives. It's a gland through which the being controls the brain and body and the nervous system. It vibrates that and opens a door. And it opens a door that telepathically links to the zero point energy of the universe and then to the source, many dimensions above the physical planes of time and space from whence we all came long ago. It begins a process of recovering that, waking it up on an upward spiral of recovery, gradually, carefully, in a balanced way. So a person's life becomes more intelligent, more enlightened, more balanced, more serene along the way. There's a certain protection that comes with that process. But it's important that people experience this for themselves so that instead of it just being my words, they actually, you know, in my work, in the Series Agenda book, for instance, I share a whole section of techniques that are designed for the prologue and all 29 chapters to help people recover what they were made to forget and they're terrified to remember. Most people claim they wanna be immortal. They wanna know what soul is, but they're terrified of it. They don't realize they're subconsciously terrified of really confronting who they are, what they are, because they would have to put away all the stuff they've been brainwashed to believe by tyrant kings on this planet, controlling priests on this planet for thousands and thousands of years. That stuff has to be dropped, not disrespected, but put aside so that the real direct experience about what they believe in can be manifested. And the only way to do that is to put out energy that is of uplifting nature with the imagination to the universe. There is no shortcut to get around this, period, for anyone. It assures that beings, when they recover who they are, will be responsible, mature, kind, contributive people to the good of all life, and not just life on earth, all life. And to do that, you have to be aware of what that life is. You can't be in ignorance, dumbed down like a little child being sped, fed pablum, being told just to believe in something after you die and then you're gonna be somehow set free to play in the universe with no wisdom, no maturity. That's never gonna happen, never. The universe is not constructed that way. It would be self-destructive to set people free as they are on earth with greater power. Look what they do with power now. Destroy almost everything they touch environments, air, water, pollution, sewage, garbage on the beaches, polluting of the oceans, the air, and they think that's normal? Everyone knows it isn't, even the people that put out that energy. They all know it's wrong, but they can't help themselves because they're afraid to change. So they're gonna need, and the reason I'm saying this is that people on earth are gonna need help from beings beyond this earth at some stage. And they're gonna be here in great numbers as consultants, scientists, 
people that know how to cure disease and all that kind of thing can come here and change this world permanently. And then we can go play among the stars with others. If you can't play nice in the universe, they're not going to allow out there. They're not going to allow you to. If I were one of them, and I am, I wouldn't permit people from Earth to go out in space further than a few inner planets in the solar system because they would go out there and simply destroy things in their ignorance of the creation, the whole multiverse itself. That's a problem. So I'm not against the liberal leaders or rulers of this planet. I'm for them remembering who they are so they can let go and accept the help that's been offered them many, a number of times. When I go into the hue and raise the tones in these radio shows, it is to put out a, an energy field into the earth that is only uplifting and of beneficial nature to all beings. No one accepted. Fear and subconscious fear makes people behave badly. In desperation, they blow things up, kill things, just anything. They do things because they are terrified that if they don't do it to someone else first, it'll be done to them. That's the thinking of tyrants only. It is not the way normal beings in the universe think. And they are vast in numbers compared to the little population on this planet. We have to join them, not the other way around. As I've said, they're not interested in running the governments of this planet. No one would want that terrible burden. You have to lie to everybody to be elected to anything. Who wants that? Nobody that's sane would want that. You know, people are going to do what they're going to do to keep the world running, but man, they're so badly misdirecting it now. The decisions they make in governments to spend money or create more problems than they create helping. And then they have to throw more money at helping solve that, and it just perpetuates itself. In an endless cycle of misdirection and mistakes and judgment about almost everything, you cannot make a correct decision about Earth and its people or the universe if you do it from fear or subconscious fear or the lust for power or the desire to have power over people so they will, you can suppress them before they suppress you. That kind of thing are subconscious negative programs in people they don't even know they have. And they're supposed to know this. Okay. The cures for all diseases is a simple thing. It's based on sound frequency. It is well known out among the stars. Not new at all. Turning on shut off genomes through precise frequencies is also well known. So that you can use 100% of a human brain that's 100% developed. Duh! This people, not from Earth, the vast majority of them are respectful of all life. And as advanced as they are, they would not lord it over us. Because they know if you wake a human being up on earth fully, they're going to be able to play with them in a mature way. They know that. But it requires the voluntary, free, free, true free will of a being on earth to start to work in that direction before they can help us. They can't wave a magic wand and do it to you. Only tyrants do that promising you great rewards and then sticking you in the back after they get what they want. Benevolent races out among the stars don't operate this way. Their technology is way beyond what we have on Earth. Not worried about being attacked by people from Earth. That's silly. And radar never knocked down an anti-gravitic craft when it came into this atmosphere so many years ago to see why nuclear bombs were being set off in our own atmosphere just to test them. 
That is an act of insanity. And they knew this. It's one of the things that drew so many here. They could detect nuclear bombs from other planets going off here. They go, what the heck are those people doing? They look in their own past when nuclear weapons were legal way long ago and they realize what they had to go through to stop that. And then they understand what people are going through here because the development of nuclear bombs on this planet was not developed by people on this planet. It was fraudulently, covertly delivered to Nazi German scientists illegally breaking an off world treaty. A treaty that was put in place half a million years ago at the end of a great war. So you got this thing that happened illegally. Then you have this use of technology that's destructive only that we didn't earn and weren't mature enough to deal with it. And you've got people who think it's just pretty cool to blow one of those up. Oh, there's military people out there looking at it with just about a couple miles away and they're getting radiated and they die. And the radiation goes into the jet stream and it falls all over the planet. It doesn't just go away. That's how crazy people were after World War II in their thinking. You bring Nazi scientists in the US and Russia, pardon them and put them in charge of our space programs who were worshipers of Hitler basically. And then you've got the problem being brought into both countries, creating a cold war. Motivated by tyrants, not even of this earth. If beings from the stars had not intervened without trying to control our governments, but stopping certain things from happening, this planet would have been destroyed in nuclear war long ago already. If we were alone in the universe, nobody would be alive on this world right now. There will come a time, not far off, when leaders of this world will be contacted again. Some of them already are. To let people know what's coming this way, that no power on this earth will prevent. It's moving through the universe, through our solar system, and it's moving in one direction and one direction only. And we're gonna have to get in sync with that and this world can change in most wondrous dramatic ways. But we're gonna require the assistance of vast hosts of very advanced races, human and otherwise, in order to help us through this critical stage of potential self-destruction. Go out in galactic history, look at worlds that almost annihilated themselves and some other race from somewhere comes in at the last second and helps them make a leap into a new direction. That's what's going on right now. Something new is going on in creation that never happened before in the entire hundreds of billions of years, the whole thing. And it's coming from a dimension far above what Buddhist monks call the void. Something's changed there, the source of life. It has to do with many world systems and many dimensional realities and earth is included. Fortunately for us, or we wouldn't be here. So what is a normal human being like? Well, I can tell people what it's like, or they can find out through their own experience, which is better. I cannot and I'm not authorized to provide people with spaceship rides. I tried to make this clear to some people I've been helping who thought that I was to be used by them for their own ends. This is not the case. I can't command other races or beings to go be with anybody because someone has a whim they want that on earth. This is not possible because it would interfere in free will, not of the person wanting it, but also the person on the other end. So when people want something to change on earth, they have to grow up enough in awareness in order to communicate with whomever or whatever they want to communicate with. And there has to be free will involved in reuniting beings who were once citizens of other worlds in other lives before they came here. This is a requirement. It's not, it cannot be gotten around. 
Um, which makes sense because if you or an individual wakes up their own higher nature as a being running a body, they're going to do the right things with the basic law of creation anyway, which is love and do as you will. But love, not just in an emotional attachment or possessive sense, love or divine love in its highest use is respect for all life. And that's not just life on earth or animals or plants or mountains or trees or human beings or different races or religions. It's respect for all life. Out there where most of God is, which is not on this earth. This is one planet in a third orbital position around the sun, circling the sun we call soul out of many amongst billions of stars in billions of galaxies, just in the physical universe alone. And in between all that space of galaxies is this looks like black energy, empty, only it's not. To the atom outside the body looking at it, it appears like a bright golden white light everywhere. And galaxies are floating in it. The predominant energy out there is not the physical matter that makes up suns and planets and moons and stars and galaxies. It's what's between all of that, underneath all that, above all that. And that is zero point energy. That's the toroidal energy. That's the, that's the energy of creation itself, which is not nuclear or atomic in nature. That's probably the first time anybody's ever said that anywhere on this world. But it's common knowledge among many races out among the stars and in other dimensions. You... What is it I'm doing when I do that? What is it I'm experiencing when I do that for the benefit of others? You can feel it vibrating the whole center of the brain, and then you can feel it yourself looking, if you choose to, looking down on the body from above it or even out in space, further out than the space shuttle ever flew. And you can be instantly back looking at the body or looking at it from above the body or anywhere you want to be. You... When I'm doing that, I have a direct connection telepathically to the source behind all life, prime creator. It's not some God of religions on earth. It's not some God of religions on other planet. It's the source itself, which is above, far above, the four lower dimensions or five lower dimensions of time and space. They each have different laws that operate the molecules and matter in each one. And there are subdivisions in each one that are called parallel dimensions, where the molecular time rate is slightly different in each one, for the matter in each one. And there are beings in all of it. More advanced beings can travel and craft between 144 parallel dimensions of the physical universe. But they can't take those craft into the astral plane, the emotional area, the next heaven above Earth. And they can't take that into the causal. But beings like us, atmas, are running bodies in each of those planes. One being, one atma, is living lifetimes in five different dimensional levels, and they don't even know it. They're not aware of it on Earth, for the most part. When you get across the, or up above the void, which is a big barrier kind of energy, it's not negative, it's not positive, it's beyond that. It separates what are called the upper dimensions of a pure positive energy where we all originally came from, from the lower worlds of time and space, which are an experiment, by the way. And we all, every one of us had a hand in creating them. I'm not talking about a brain and body of one lifetime. No, I'm not talking about that at all. What we are as beings that run brains and bodies existed before the worlds of time and space were even created which means we are part of the source of the Supreme Being itself. 
made of exactly the same energy with the same faculties and creative potentials on a smaller scale. Like a pure spherical drop of energy out of a mighty ocean of spherical beings that make up what we call the ocean of sound and light, which is far above the void. I bring this out because once people begin to hear it, somewhere in their past, subconsciously buried, is this wisdom, this understanding. And under the right conditions, it can be recovered, recalled, or awakened, what we call enlightenment. If a brain and body growing up on Earth never learned any of this out-of-body stuff or anything about the other planes or never met beings from other worlds, then how are they supposed to know what they are that's running that body? Well, they're not. And most people are afraid to know that. They really are. All of the world's faiths as they're practiced on earth today are not represented out among the stars. In other words, there's none of the religions on earth that are called that out there. And that doesn't mean they're inferior. It means they're probably much more enlightened about what real spirituality is as a being than people on earth who can't remember who they are. So which people call master teachers that are so esoteric and hidden on earth, most of them are not from earth and they visit here. And they're much more aware than people on earth and they've been trying for thousands of years to get a, a change in the conditions of the lower dimensions of time and space, not just for planet earth. And something recently happened out there that's made that possible. That energy is moving through our solar system now, and it cannot be altered. It cannot be reversed. It cannot be controlled. There's no weapon or technology or being that can manipulate it whatsoever in the worlds of time and space, and it's moving in a new direction. So people on Earth now have an opportunity to really have a transformation happen to this planet. They don't even know it yet. But some people in the hidden government classified area and a few other people are beginning to become aware of this fact. Gradually, it's loosening up their grip, their fear, their domination. And this has to be for the good of all people in all countries. It's not in favor of one country or one religion over another or anything like that. It's way, way bigger than that. The way to access becoming more enlightened and aware of this as an individual is through working with the first sound behind all creation, the zero point energy of the universe accessed through you. You can feel it. Okay. If I send out the hue in a series of higher tones, what it's doing for the listeners on these radio shows, whether they know it now or not, whether they're confident about it or not, whether they think I'm just some nut, I don't really care what they think because most of what they're thinking is wrong anyway. So I don't need to care about that. It's not gonna upset me or get me out of serenity of being what people do on earth or anything like that. I know what their potential is, they don't. But they need to and they have a right to, remember. It begins a process of reversing what was done to them that put them on earth with no memory. That's the best way I've had putting it. It begins a reversal where the being begins to journey while their body's still alive. Every night, everybody leaves their body and they begin a spiral journey upward back to the source from whence they once departed long ago. And this could mean billions of years of lifetimes, not of bodies, the being running different bodies for periods of time. There are people on earth who can't remember who they are that have lived in a body on some of the world for a million years and don't remember any of it because of the way things unfolded in galactic history, a history they don't remember. 
People have a body living on the astral plane, causal, mental, and etheric, five levels, including the physical. All emotion comes from the astral dimension, the next heaven up. All causation, cause and effect comes from the causal plane, all thought from the mental plane. Everything of a finer nature with the least amount of negativity in it comes from the causation that's done in the etheric plane, which is very refined matter. And then there's this void. And then above it, these other realities that are not made of time and space. No suns, no moons, no stars there, but certainly structures and form floating in energy because it doesn't work like it does down here. That's really native territory to all of us. The more advanced races and the more advanced master teachers on countless world systems, on multiple dimensional levels, who are really astute and not run by tyrants understand this now. The people people could meet on ships from other worlds understand this. They could help people remember this, recover this. People have to ask for it. They have to want it. Otherwise, you just give up your authority to some guy that's more fear than you are, some ruler, some king, some political figure. They're more in, they're more in subconscious fear than any of the rest of us. That's why they run for these positions, knowing they're going to have to get elected and then lie to everybody. They call it classified. It's for your own good that we lie to you. We get to know, but you dumb people don't. That's an attitude that's used as a justification to abuse treating life respectfully. It just is. Everybody knows it. Those people who hear these, these little radio shows we do, they know it. They don't want to be like that. They just don't know what to do to change it. They're going to need help. And they're getting a lot of it. And it's not on earth. For the most part, it isn't yet. But they do come here. So with your permission, Perry, I will take people on a little journey above the earth. Since we're starting late because of our previous work we did before the show, which had to do with devices that heal. Let's put it that way. I begin the hue, first half of the word human. First, by respecting every living thing on this planet. And I actually see this. I don't talk about it or believe it, or it's not a religion for me. I don't have faith about it. I know it. There's a difference. Knowing who and what you are that isn't a physical form and how you're what your purpose for existing is with the source behind all life is everything anybody is after finding out, whether they know it consciously or not. So I send out the hue to all life on earth as a representative of vast numbers of beings not on earth who do this with me for the uplifting benefit of everything that exists on this planet. We can't force anybody like tyrants would to change. But we can uplift the energy and offer people the techniques and means to do this for themselves. To discover and explore while their body's alive. To remember what they do when they're out of their body at night, come back in the morning, wake it up. How do you bring back awareness of what you're doing when you put the body in the trance state called sleep every night? It's a complex process, but people take it for granted on earth. They just think their brain just kind of does it on automatic. This is not the fact. Come on in, Starlight. The brain doesn't put itself to sleep. We do. It means that the being you um, unconsciously makes the pineal gland secrete serotonin, which makes melatonin, which develops this sleep state so the body will run and breathe and pump the heart and blood while you're gone. And there is an energy connection between the core of the spherical being or soul of each being 
and that pineal gland, and it cannot be broken by tyrants or technology or nuclear bombs or anything else. Bodies can be destroyed, but that doesn't hurt the being. It doesn't kill the being running it. So this process begins, the body drifts off, people identify with that sleeping body and make themselves unconscious with it. It just means they've not been trained or taught how to bring back awareness of what they're doing when they're not in the body the next morning when they wake it up. People call it dreaming. Dreams, they think, are they're not made up in the brain. You've got REM, theta sleep, and all these different sleep states. But those are just measuring brainwave frequencies. It's not measuring what the being is seeing or doing. The being is not the brain. <laughs> what people imagine with is not in the brain. The billions of brain cells don't have a function within itself that has a motion picture camera and a movie screen on which to show things it wants to imagine. It can't do it within its own structure. A couple of cells are over here in the back of the theater and they're showing the screen on the other brain cells. It doesn't work like that. People see in daydreaming and what they imagine, they're actually seeing what they're imagining somewhere else in creation. They're not taught this, so they just think it's coming from their brain. It isn't. This is key information for people who want to recover who they are. I'll begin these tones now, and then we'll go on a journey. It's helping all the forms you have in different lives, on different planes, different heavens, where you're running a body as a single spherical being, a single soul. Recover and awaken to be aware of each other, your higher selves. People talk about this all the time, but I don't see any evidence that most people's higher selves are helping them at all. Because they're even unconscious in higher dimensions above here, below the void but within the worlds of time and space itself. I'll begin those tones now. You...
Can you hear me, Perry? Good. I plugged in the headphones. My body is in the sleep state, even though I'm talking to you. This is something I had to learn how to do over a period of time so that I could serve as a guide and describe what is being seen on these out of body journeys so people can begin to recover their ability to see what is in the space beyond earth, what's on other worlds, what's in other dimensions. If they can't remember or can't imagine what it's like, they will never get there. That omnipresent field of energy between all things that supports planets and moons and suns and stars, galaxies and dimensions, parallel and higher, is a co-creator with us as individual atmos or souls. What people call divine spirit is really a co omnipresent living energy that is a co-creator with what we imagine in it, good or bad. It is completely unbiased and will produce both. So if people are operating, growing up as they are, in fear of who and what they are, leaving the body, or fear of the present and future on this planet, then they're putting out two opposing streams of imagination into the one source they pray to all the time. One is uplifting and benevolent and good for all life and their family, and one is negative. But to neutralize the power and ability of an individual and ground it to the earth. And people are creating and maintaining the unconscious state of the way earth is now by this unconscious process. We are meant to learn how to utilize the ability to see into the multiverse properly. The proper utilization of the creative imagination, that which the being itself sees when it awakens its ability to look into the grand multidimensional creation and see things with direct knowing certainty, does not involve doubt, fear, speculation, theory, debate, argument, politics, religion, or anything else. It involves divine love. And that really, in the higher sense, is having respect for all life. To do that, to embrace the greater infinity of the source behind all life on all dimensional levels, we have to know what that life is in the multiverse. Or you cannot respect what you do not know. If people want to stay stuck on earth, revolving in incarnations with no memory, then they keep abusing life the way they are. If they want out of that, they have to start creating with their imagination solutions to these problems with the source, the one power behind all life that actually is the one power that can change things. Individuals are not a power that can change anything. Collectively on multidimensional levels, beings comprise what is called the source behind all life, prime creator, as it is termed and known by the most advanced spacefaring races out there among the stars in the physical universe. I am aware of several organizations that exist in the Milky Way galaxy that people on Earth are not yet aware exist, except maybe a few. One, just jurisdiction over nearly half of the galaxy. They're called the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds, and they are comprised of more than 450 million plus spacefaring, highly advanced inhabited human, humanoid, and other races. On the other, little more than half is a race of humanoids that have more strands of DNA, have immortalized physical bodies, 
Some of them are millions of years old, unaged, which is not a trap for a being that can get in and out of that body. They are one of the most advanced genetic scientists in the universe. There are others. They solved long ago how to turn on, shut off genomes on DNA and get the brains working at 100% capacity. This is old science for them. If we want to enjoy that on earth, we're going to have to request their kind assistance. Then you've got a few spacefaring races out there, a small organization of worlds that are tyrant. They no longer have a position of power or threat on earth not even an underground basis. They've been removed, but not by people on Earth. So you don't see any new stories or hear about new stories of little gray abductions of people that haven't for several decades. It's time people on Earth caught up to present time about these subjects. These events were very negative experiences for people, for some on Earth. And it wasn't our governments, classified or otherwise, that solved this problem. The negative effect left on the people of Earth was not started by tyrant ETs. It was done to beings before they were forced in bodies with no memory on this planet. Beings have been coming to Earth for 65 million years since the dinosaurs were made extinct here. They did not evolve on this planet. They didn't come out of the primordial soup of amoebas, start crawling on land with fins like legs, and then suddenly become homo sapiens. Dinosaurs didn't evolve on this planet either. Evolution takes place but the species didn't develop here. They were brought here. All the races represented on earth are indicative of vast world systems that have that one race on their planets, like African American, for instance, Asian, Aboriginal, short Mayan and Aztec people, Sumerian, Egyptian, Semitic. They all are representative of human races that evolved these slight differences in their genetic coding from planetary systems that revolve around more than one sun. Sometimes binary, sometimes trinary sun systems. So there's a history missing from the conscious awareness of atmos running bodies on Earth that go back 65 million years for this Earth and our solar system. There was a planet called Maldek, the people call it that on Earth, that was blown apart through the misuse of one single device millions of years ago that is now an asteroid field circling between the planets of Mars and Jupiter in the orbit of a planet that was once there. The atmosphere of Mars was ruined at that time. Earth's poles imbalanced to flip cyclically. Now that's been stopped permanently by beings who are the mechanics of creation that run galaxies and worlds and portals between dimensions. They don't normally have any re inner reaction with human beings, but they are there. We call them silent mentors. There are master teachers among the stars, many who travel along on each space mission on larger space vessels to keep and help keep this, the ship's personnel in serenity of being and not operating any negative imagination or emotion. They do this deliberately. 
It takes the capability of a being like myself or others to pilot ships many times faster than the speed of what people call light speed on Earth and into and through parallel and interdimensional portals takes a person without a subconscious negative drive in order to move more advanced craft around the universe. Earth people are not like this. They have unknown negative subconscious programs that influence their thinking and decision making that would literally have them destroy themselves in those craft if they tried to pilot them. And I'm talking about antigravitic craft as well. As I said before, we have to work with the one energy behind creation to make this stuff work. And that requires that we respect all life, that it supports its common sense. This cannot be gotten around, weaseled around, manipulated, or snuck around, or covertly tried to get around, or any of that stuff doesn't work like that. Imagine being above your body as a spherical being of energy looking kindly down on it about near the ceiling wherever you live. Just use daydreaming. Everybody knows what daydreaming is. It's what you idly imagine when you're busy looking out of your eyes and sitting in a chair looking out the window at a backyard and you're thinking about being in the mountains or on a ski trip or anything else when you can imagine something with your eyes open or closed. When that happens, it's not the brain or anything in the brain that's doing that. How can the brain in a human body that never had this trained into it growing up, imagine what is on another planet? How can it imagine writing episodes of fiction movies and other space and other realities? from what they grew up with, they could not. So you see what I'm sharing with you here is that people are creative because of what they see in the multiverse. And for people on earth, they're doing it unconsciously. The vast nature of beings beyond earth do this consciously and they know it. You In the atmosphere, find yourself hovering as a sphere of light, completely safe. You don't feel heat or cold. You don't feel radiation from the sun. It could be day or night, and yet everything will look lit up to you because you are seeing it not with physical eyes, but with the perceptive capabilities of the atma itself. This energy that makes up the different layers or levels of the spherical atma we all are is made of energy from the source or prime creator. And the teardrop shapes roughly looking that are self-luminous in each layer cover the spectrum of light from a white core like a sun to an outer yellow layer as a larger concentric circle of orange then red then blue then green lavender and violet surrounded by a white golden energy that is comprised of the toroidal or zero point energy of the universe, which is not nuclear in nature. It just isn't. Science on earth will make giant leaps when quantum physicists and others begin to understand what they discovered about this zero point energy. They don't know why it isn't behaving according to physical laws that physical matter behaves with. So they call it the God particle, whatever this energy is that is below behind everything. Fills the void of space. Dark matter is not dark, except to human eyes that can't see into a high enough frequency to see how beautiful it is. So it appears black. It isn't. In space, in the atmosphere, hovering at about 10,000 feet, there's clouds around you looking down where you live, 
could be in Thailand, could be in California, could be in England or South America or Russia or China or anywhere else. And you can see in the atmosphere behind what you can see is molecules you're breathing as if you're breathing in air in this spherical form and breathing out, but it's not air you're breathing. It's this energy that's a white golden light that's behind the blue of the atmosphere, just subtler, you know, just behind it. That energy not only extends inside the atmosphere through the mantle of the planet, it extends out into the void of space and comprises the energy that makes up that void of space in which all things float and move and revolve. Be in space above the planet. You are a sphere of light. You are not a material body, you are spherical. Have you ever wondered why planets and moons and stars and suns are around? The human being was not created in the image of a human body as supposed to be like the source behind all life, like some guy on a throne. No. The spherical being running that human body is in existence in the image of the source itself. It's spherical. In space, you don't feel heat or cold. You don't feel radiation from the sun. And you can see that all of us on this little radio show journey are hovering as spheres of light in a circle around a friend of mine. His name is Ambassador Torellian. He is from the ancient Ceres race. Human, 18 feet tall. Others of his race are 25 feet tall when they had physical bodies over a billion years ago. And he's showing you an 18 foot tall human body looks like a Greek God, like a white gown, slightly pointed ears, beautiful luminous blue eyes, slightly curly blonde hair, holding two thumbs up with a white golden light around each one, holding the space for us in a pure energy that has no negative nature whatsoever. And he's smiling. When you look at the earth beyond him, you can see the polar ice caps. You can see North and South America, Asia, Africa, Russia, China, the North and South Pole, the barren moon with its meteor craters and no atmosphere. It does not turn on its axis as it revolves around the planet earth. This creates problems for people on Earth because of the tidal forces it exerts because it's not turning on its axis. And this pulls on the water that makes up most of what is a human body and it creates emotional instability in people. The rule of thumb in creation is for a planet to have no moons or more than one, preferably with atmospheres turning on their axis. For some scientists who hear this, that will be a key for them to understand why there's so many imbalances on this planet. That's just part of it, a small part of it. When you look into this and you can see the yellow sun we call soul, way off, shining. And when you look out in space here, you don't see a black void between the earth, the moon, and the sun and the stars. It's a white golden light packing energy between all those things that float in it. It's radiant and vibrant and moving, but it is not molecular in nature. We as beings comprised of this energy are capable of telepathically linking or communicating into it. And it moves all the way up through all the dimensions of time and space past the void in the upper realities to the source itself behind all life. And when we connect into it, it is not limited by the speed of light or gravity whatsoever. It is in this medium that we move as atmas, as spherical beings, to traverse the multiverse and experience and recover knowing who and what we are 
and why we exist, our purpose for existing. What is that? In this energy, you begin to remember. We are meant to be trustworthy, conscious co-creators with the source behind all life. This is the destiny of a human being. So when beings who know this from other worlds look at us on earth completely unconscious and misdirected, they know there is great potential in all of us. When you look at the earth now, you're going to watch Torellian. We're in a circle around him. Here's the thing. You're going to see a body that looks just like yours, perfectly healthy at about 36 years of age, standing in space as if you're breathing. It's a pure energy form that looks just like you. And it is a projection from the white core of the sphere of the being that's hovering above it. And it's so we can show each other who we are. That body form is representative of the character of the Atma that is spherical. And it can perceive and feel and sense things in space between all of us around Torellian. It can see the earth and the moon. Torellian waves his hand and you suddenly realize and this body you have is healthy. If you're blind, you see. If you've got problems in any way with the body, here it's perfect. It comes out of the white core of our being. And you look at the earth and you suddenly see it raise in vibration and now you see an earth with no polar ice caps. The continents you're familiar with seeing are not there. You look at the moon circling the planet, it's turning on its axis, it's full of atmosphere, rain clouds and little lakes and rivers and little oceans, five dome cities on the front side. And as it's turning, two dome cities in a mountainous area become apparent as it revolves around the earth with gravity. The sun is in the distance, but this is in the third higher parallel dimension of the physical universe. There is one a little lower, and then there's the earth you're familiar with below that. This earth has one continent, massive continent, centered over the equator from the left to the right hemisphere. It moves up towards the North Pole, and then curves back down about a third of the way from the North Pole, and the same on the South Pole. And down in the south polar region, you'll see a crescent-shaped green glowing beach from space. There's no polar ice caps here. It's not cold there. And all we're doing as Atmos is raising our vibration to see into a higher parallel dimension where the time rate of the molecules is faster. Universally the same throughout that parallel dimension. All the galaxies in space you would see from their planets and matter and people would vibrate in this universal. Same time rate, molecularly, but it's made of higher vibratory atoms. So each parallel dimension has a different time rate. Rule number one. The next major division above here, the astral plane has 144 parallel dimensions in it. And they each vibrate at a different time rate made of finer molecular material and so forth. Until we get up to what is called the void, which appears to be empty of all things, but is a pale blue luminous light. And then we get up into the higher realities where everything changes. No negative nature whatsoever exists there. And yet something dramatic has changed up there among the beings to help solve the greater problems of eternity. And that is, how do we make the lower dimensions of time and space and worlds like Earth mirrors of the upper realities? This is our job. This is part of why we came here, to one day be able to co-creatively bring back solutions to these great questions from our experience in many lifetimes. We all carry a seed, a crystal, an awareness of how to solve this problem. But to solve it, we have to return to the source from whence we came. And people in the lower dimensions of time and space have not been doing that. So something had to be done to encourage this process once again to be underway. 
When you look out in space, you can see billions of stars in every direction around us, beyond the earth, the moon, and the sun. And you can hear a deep rumbling thunder sound. It's not scary. It's deep like rumbling thunder, but gentle. It's a sound coming off the physical universe. It's a sound running through it. It is manifested from the energy between all things. It has a white golden light nature to it when you're off earth, looking at it as the Atma. It is a telepathic medium for all beings. Let's take a little trip to what's called the void that certain esoteric groups, certain Buddhist monks think of as the end of it all, the place you cannot go beyond. If they're taught that, then they're limiting themselves to traveling beyond. That's all that is. Torellian, <clears throat> when you look at him <clears throat> standing in the between of all of us, you can see the earth, you can see another continent, two thirds the size. On the other side of the planet, you can see right through it. That continent is named Lemuria. It is similar to a continent that existed on Earth before it was destroyed 100,000 years ago when the poles of the planet flipped physically overnight, 180 degrees. Here, it was never destroyed. There is an Atla or Atlantis Island or continent two thirds its size on the other side. These are all, well, they're lightly inhabited by master teachers, Galactic Alliance personnel, and people that have had or overseen this place for ages. It is going to be used as a template to change the earth and the moon that is barren and does not turn on its axis. There are ways to do this. When you look up, you see a blue-green vortex of water like a cyclone moving gently clockwise. It looks like luminous water. Torellian has simply opened a doorway. Remember, we're all atmos now. We're not physical beings. And up through it, you can see way up at the very other end of this tube, a cobalt blue, luminous, bright atmosphere. And then as a group of people, all of us in a circle around Torellian, we are beginning to move up very swiftly into this wide opening. And then we're shot up at faster than the speed of light. And you can see levels of galaxies passing below us through the transparent walls of this radiant cyclone of energy. And then you see this blue atmosphere approaching and suddenly we are hovering inside it, looking down at this opening and we can see ourselves far below, still hovering around Torellian as spherical beings with bodies that look like us that are energy that look human, but it's a pure projection of the atom itself for identification of each other. And you can see the earth, you can see the continent of Lemuria, the glowing green beach, the moon with oxygen, dome cities, and then it vanishes. And we find ourselves hovering in a infinitely vast cobalt blue bright, it's kind of a pale blue, I shouldn't call it cobalt blue. It's kind of a pale blue light. And it doesn't appear to be anything here. No physical structure of any kind. No planets, no moons, no stars, no galaxies but it is self-luminous. And so are we hovering in it. In the distance, you begin to see what looks like something white, very bright approaching. In other words, we're moving toward it. And then as we get close to it, it moves into this glowing white sandy beach, perfectly horizontal, straight as an arrow that goes as far as you can see left or right. And we stop to hover near the shoreline of another higher reality. On the upper side of this void, 
we can see jungle trees that are made of crystalline things growing. And this beach is glowing with white light, golden light, about a foot above the sand. And you can see these tall, crystalline-like jungle trees, transparent leaves. And these birds start flying out of the trees and they hover in 12 rows in front of us. About a foot long from the root of their beak to the tip of their long V-shaped split tails, they have double sets of bird wings like a dragonfly, but bird wings and rainbow colored bodies blended so beautifully that the tip of the tail to the beak is like this beautiful blending of thousands of colors. They look kind of like a blue jay. And they begin to sing hovering in there in the air in front of us. It's not really air, it's energy. And when you look above them, they have a spherical being like you hovering above each one, playing with these advanced genetic bird bodies to have experience. And they have beautiful vocal cords and they begin to sing the hue out, male and female, and multiple dimensional levels and so sing a beautiful melody to us. Sounds like this. Hue. 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 And it represents the movement of higher energy into lower planes. So they're greeting us. And then they dart back to the trees and go about their business. As a group of beings hovering around Terillion, we move over the top of the trees and inland. In the distance, you can see a long snow covered mountain range and beautiful crystalline buildings along the base of the mountain. A little brown path going up to them beautiful botanical paradise. And just below us, not far from the coast, is a white 100 foot wide marble floor and concentric circles of beautiful flowering plants. And in the middle is a fountain. It is a white alabaster fountain about 15 feet wide with scalloped edges on a round base on a square pedestal with a circular marble sitting seat around it with ornately carved, looks like white alabaster stone. And in the fountain is the statue of a being standing there, bronze of skin, bald head, two gold bracelets on his upper arms, a white tunic dress from his waist to just above his bare ankles, bare chested, strongly built, perfectly trim, about 36, Looks like someone from India, but he's not. His eyes are gold colored, golden. And his hands are down at his sides with his palms open facing forward. And a white golden light is pouring from the palms into the fountain, filling it. It looks like luminous white gold water. And it's pouring in an even sheet down these scalloped edges and vanishing in the ground. And over to the right, there is a pathway that begins at the edge of this circular marble floor and continues up in a winding path to one of the crystal buildings like a palace near the base of the central mountain, a long chain of white snow-capped mountains. There are blue-green forest trees extending in the distance and orchard fields you can see from here up to the mountains. And this man that is the statue is standing there with his arms folded at the beginning of the white marble floor, at the end of the brown moss covered path. And he raises his right hand in greeting. His name is Sat Nam, it just means true name, first sound behind all creation. And he's aware of our presence. And he's welcoming us to the first higher developed, higher dimension above the void. The energy here is pure positive. The things you see are mocked up and maintained by beings. You won't see any moons or suns or stars here. This looks like a planet, but it's a floating landmass in a sea of light. It 
So this being will float up off the ground. You see a beautiful bright atmosphere hovering above this form that's being presented to you. And he approaches each one of you on this journey and simply smiles and his eyes begin to glow. And then you feel an uplifting presence and you feel a brightening to the center of the spherical being you are with the energy that's coming from that fountain. Little streams of it shoot out from the fountain and enter each one of you. They brighten the core of your being and then pass through all the layers of the spherical atma and continue on into space on a journey to be uplifting benefit to others. Find yourself looking down now at your bare feet. You are wiggling your toes in radiant white glowing sand at the beach, near the shore of the void itself. And this has to do with recall and remembering who and what we are and where we came from before we embarked across the void to incarnate or run forms like human in the worlds of time and space long ago. And you feel this white energy, you pick up the sand and you can see it's like little round polished diamonds. Perfectly pure, glowing. It's a charged beach. And that energy moves through you, up the top of your smiling face that looks human, about 36, and into the white core of your being hovering above it. And then you look down and see that this beam of light is set in a thin stream, straight down, through the void, down into the lower worlds, and we follow it. We're riding this blue beam of light surrounded by a white golden light, and we are in the center of it, moving down through levels of galaxies until we stop and come to hover around Torellian, looking down upon this earth with no polar ice caps, the cotton of Emeria, living moon, oxygen. The stars are all around us. The atmosphere, the void of space is white golden light. And then you see the earth with the polar ice caps appear in the same place and the moon moving around the earth in the same place with no atmosphere, meteor crater covered, does not turn on its axis for now. And you realize you're looking at the earth and we're still in the same position as spherical beings hovering around Torellian in space above the planet earth you're familiar with. And then you see Torellian's two thumbs with this golden white light around and he sends a little beam of this into each of the white centers of our being. And you see a little beam of this shoot down into the atmosphere of Earth. And then suddenly you are hovering above your body near the ceiling and seeing this go down into the pineal gland of your brain, gently uplifting you, turning some things on, and then moving through your brain and widening your electromagnetic field about two miles. And then it continues into the Earth where it connects to three new pyramids that have been placed on this planet. Golden sided, four sided, like the big Egyptian pyramid. Quartz cap. And inside is a fountain, like the one you just saw up there in the Atma plain with Satnam. Two at the bottom of Earth's deepest oceans, and one inside a hollowed out interior of a mountain in Himalaya. And they are turned on. The energy you bring back here moves through us into the center of these pyramids, and then it's shot off the top. And it continues to a pyramid that is stationed many times bigger between two stationary asteroids in the asteroid field between Mars and Jupiter in our solar system. And then it's beamed out of that and continues to even bigger pyramids stationed between individual stars in the Milky Way galaxy. These were not in existence prior to about nine years ago or at the time. 
Now you see we have a co-creative part to play with all of this. Look down kindly on your body. Allow yourself to remember or store the awareness of this journey in that brain and body that never had any of this growing up. Enlighten the one you're running on earth. Be kind to yourself and when you're ready, open your eyes. So I guess we got a radio show going again after all. I didn't think we'd make it today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just, just goes to show how limiting thinking is. I think it's good we did it for many reasons. Correct. Similar to other journeys we've had, but different. Always a little different. And I never know what we're going to do till we get there together. The point of it is that when someone can begin to imagine these different planes and see kind of what's there, I just introduced the basics of what I obviously see there. I can't, we don't have the time for me to describe everything else, other beings I see there. So it's up to the individual who sees the basic imaginative constructs, what they're like. They're, everybody on these trips are gonna see things that I don't say or more things. And they're free to explore those things when they're out of their body on these journeys. They're meant to be doing this and they're doing it every night but it's an unfocused, undisciplined journey. And they bring back scattered information, and often very little awareness of what they were doing because they don't understand they're capable of doing it. They're not taught that growing up. So as adults, we have to learn this in a childlike way. If it crosses your path and you start working with the hue, the first sound behind all creation from the upper worlds, it begins a process of returning the Atma home. And it cannot be reversed, fortunately. So I will leave everybody with that. Yes, thank you everyone for watching. And thank you to you too, Scott. And you can find all the links of Scott's work under this video. This is the book that has the special techniques involving the U. And it's a ship in the ice rings of Saturn. It's actually created as original art to depict a scene in the book. This is actually a person who played the part of Mark Sandfield by the people, the person I worked with to create these. And this is him in the High Sierra Mountains being attacked by bad guys, not from Earth. And he gets saved by a human aboard this craft. Begins his journey to recovery. So this is about what's going on out in the universe in present time that people don't know about on Earth that's changing everything. And then this is the first book of the Parallel Time Trilogy. And this on the front, and these are actual actors that played these people from other worlds. This is at the time of Lemuria on Earth, just before the poles flipped and destroyed the lands, rose up new continents. And he had this being, this master teacher, this is Etta. He's not human, he's silica based, very intelligent. And this is what the Atma, the individual soul, or being actually looks like. Quite beautiful, structured. People want to know what they look like. That's what they look like when they don't have a body. It's not an astral body, that's just a higher physical plane. That's what we really look like. So I put that out because then people have something to see and go, oh wait, I'm starting to remember something. I can start to, you know, they start to stimulate that recovery. So I will thank you, Perry, for having the courage to do these shows, as thank always. You, and thank I'll say good night to you. And I will stop the recording. <laughs>